and welcome to channel. I am excited to bring you the brand new Lozy Promoto MX. I'm probably one of the first YouTubers out there to bring this to you that is not a full-time RC car channel that gets sent this type of stuff for review or a hobby store to happen to get them in. Uh, I'm, I'm like pre-order for a couple of places. Uh, I've had alerts set out and I found one at a local hobby store. So thank you very much to Hobby Town in Mobile, Alabama for putting my name on this and holding it while I got back into town. I was out doing some stuff. This came up. I said, please hold it. They did. I got it for you. So now we're going to go ahead and unbox and show this to you. Before I cut it open, I'll let you do it. Let you look at this. If you want to pause at any part and read it, feel free. This thing, just everything I've seen so far, has just been absolutely amazing. Raising rate rear suspension, just like a real raising rate rear suspension that starts soft and then, okay, yeah, it gets harder. So basically like a uh, progressive rate. It seems everything they've done, they've made this like just really easy for your first time person to use. And, uh just make it look authentic and, and fun to drive. Excuse the noise, uh, this is like a metal shed. This is Florida, it is extremely hot, so I have to have that little, that little air conditioner running. I know it doesn't make for the best acoustics, but uh, do the best that we can here. thing has got some pretty good weight to it. I will give it that. Oh wow. Wow. I can say the videos I've watched does not do this any kind of justice whatsoever. It just, it looks amazing. The details here. So I'm pretty sure if you've watched this video, you've already watched a hundred other people. I'm going to try to make this one a little different. I'm going to do a size comparison with this thing with some uh, more recognizable RCs out there. And uh, try to bring you some unique footage. But man, wow, this thing is freaking cool. Wow, so pretty sure you've seen a hundred times you get a thing of chain lube, which is, feels like it's lubed up. You get a battery spacer, you get some spacers here to put into the back to allow for a chain. As the chain wears, you need to adjust it. Then you have some tools here, which from what I'm, if I recall correctly from what I watched, lozy has got some excellent videos on how to fix and repair this. So check it out, Lozy's own web uh, <laughs> YouTube channel. But I believe these are for like rebuilding the forks, uh, shocks and stuff like that. And then you got the two nails here that are for the starting gate. 
Oh, that's cool. It matches the uh, bike too. I did not, never noticed that on any videos. It is nice to give you some batteries. Not really uh, high quality. I wouldn't leave them in your remote for very long. So we'll go through here. I haven't seen too many people go through the entire packet here. So we'll see everything that's in here. So oh look at that. So oh okay. So if you wanna, I guess if you don't like the number that's on there, you can change it. And then they, of course, they throw in a bunch of Lozy stickers. Pro Moto MX support. Race inspired. Uh, upgrade. So, oh, that's pretty cool. But, uh, I might have to put this somewhere here. And of course, the, from what I understand, the early ones that are sent out have this coupon for tires. So you get a quick start guide. Optional parts. I actually like this aluminum swing arm, but I cannot find it online anywhere. Oh, okay. This is a bunch of numbers. It's hard to see. Hopefully you'll be able to pick it out. So if you use the uh, other stickers, there's no numbers on it, I don't think. Let's see. Yeah. So this is blank. So then you can put your own numbers on it. Cool. Now, uh, they offer this in like three, three setups. The red and the blue are just the bike. So you're gonna have to buy like your own battery and charger if you don't already have it. The green one is the complete kit. And the green one is like really hard to find. Uh, I really didn't want green, I wanted blue. So I was kind of set on getting blue, but I would have got the green had it been that because you can buy. Uh, blue fenders, blue, you can buy that kit and it pretty much works out to be about the same after you buy a blue jersey, the fenders, kind of what you would spend on a battery and charger. So, man, this is a hefty book. Yeah, so there's the tool in use right there. And that's for the uh, front fork, those two tools. Oh, I cannot wait to use this. Okay, so I opened this up. You've probably seen this before, I'm not sure. But I know I have some subscribers that aren't familiar with the cars, but let's take a deep look or kind of a, a look inside of this before we go and get it dirty. Now here is where the magic happens. This is what makes this bike possible and that's the gyro. So this electric motor here spins and it's what gives it the balance. That's what makes this thing work. And then right here, this is to me, it's just amazing the technology in these receivers. So, you know, on our normal RC cars, when we start skidding, these things sense it. I believe that's the same way with the bike because we do have a uh, MSS XO rate, uh, which I believe is like the stability control for the bike, how far to lean, and that, and all that is contained within here not only does it receive the signal from the controller and tell the steering server to go the throttle to tell the motor to go 
it does so much more. It's just absolutely fascinating that they get so much into a little tiny case. But yeah, here's uh, what we're looking at here. So, you know, we got our receiver here, we got our gyro, we got the motor. You can get a better look at the shock right there. Nice little coil over. It is adjustable. I did notice by feeling, it does feel like it's a little like slow going. So I think this would make it bouncy. I, to me, I think, you know, just the, like the rebound is a little slow. Like, I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm not an expert at this, but here we go. And this is just really cool. Just a little mini chain right here. So you have your sprocket here, which... This feels like plastic. That just feels like straight plastic. And this is aluminum right there. But this is, wow, that's kind of uh, concerning. So that is plastic. Hmm. Okay. Now let's take a look at the other side. So, uh, not really sure what, oh, okay, so that's your, uh, I believe that's the ESC, the speed control. Uh, you have your power button. And here's all your gears. This should be, I believe that's the slipper clutch right there. So it has a nice tight seal right here. And okay, so there's your, uh, so this is the brake servo. So normally on your RC cars, when you hit the brakes, wow, I think it's raining. So if you hear, actually it's nice, it's nighttime now. Um, I had to take a break. Uh, I'll tell you the story here, <laughs> the battery, but um, where was I? Oh, the brake. Um, normally when you hit the brake on an RC car, it engages the electric motor and it slows it down. Well, with this only having one tire this is only like one drive where most cars are either two or four wheel drive and you have all the wheels going or at least two wheels stopping this doesn't have that luxury so when you hit the brakes you actually engage the motor and you slow it down through here and then also this servo actuates let's see if we can uh see if you can see that see that moving So that's so you can see there and now it doesn't spin at all so the, on this when you hit the brakes the servo actuates and pulls this up and engages this this is a real disc brake um, and then you also have the motor th via the chain which which will act as a braking system as well so let's kind of go through that uh we'll just go through everything like i mentioned the brake these are two-piece wheels these are like what they said real spokes tires are uh, nice and soft feels pretty good so i mean you do have a legit suspension here And what they did is they built this thing to withstand accidents. So you should, right here, you can see this whole front end pivots. So if you do run into something, and inevitably you will, <laughs> most likely if you're like me, it does have this to give. So that will give a little bit, and that will protect it. So what else do we have here? And I think that's about, that, you know, pretty much covers it. Um, you know, you do have a servo saver down here, which protects us. So that way, if you rack the handlebars really quick, um, it protects the servo from stripping the gears inside. This doesn't look like it's going to be a terribly hard uh, vehicle to work on. Right here. You have, and there is this too, in case you uh, wheelie too hard, uh, this will come back. And then you also have the skid plate here. So what's cool is there are three driving modes that you adjust with the switch right here. So I even took a little 
D for dirt, S for street, W for wheelie. So that's one, two, and three. So this will beep like three times for wheelie or twice for street. And, uh, and like everybody know, mentioned, the, uh, the steering wheel here is made with spokes to kind of match the uh, match the uh, spokes in the wheels right there. So and then what's different with this is that you had the flywheel, which is the gyro right here that you have to turn on. And I will be doing that next as soon as I can power this thing on. Um, so the hobby shop gave me the wrong battery. They gave me this and it has an IC3 connector. This bike uses a much larger IC5 connector. Who would have thought that a little 50C battery would need a... Uh... But I ordered just a connector. I'll unsolder this, solder the new one on. You know, the real kicker is I have an Arma infraction or the felony came with the IC5s. I cut them off and put Traxxas connectors on. I'm not saying Traxxas batteries are the best or anything like that. I just, I had a ton of batteries and I really didn't want to invest more into it. I already had the Traxxas. So I put Traxxas connectors on and I never kept them. In fact, the only thing I kept is an <laughs> IC3. It's the only one I kept. Go figure, right? Usually I'm just a hoarder. I keep everything and... Like, I don't need an IC3. I'm going to cut this one off, and I'll have another IC3 connector. And I threw away the IC5s. So go figure. So I can't... I've had the bike for a day, and I can't use it. So luckily, Amazon has a IC5 connector that's available next day. So I will have this thing running. But let's just take a quick look here at the battery compartment. It is fairly deep. So the battery does go in. So you want to make sure the battery goes in. The wires are on this side. And what's cool is I thought about this is that you tuck this in and the wires go there and you plug it in. Now the only thing I think with this bike here is it would really be nice if this connector was that easy to access. Because once you put, uh, I think... Yeah, once you put that on, I don't think this is the right side. Eh. Oh, that's right, it would be one of these. Yeah, once you get that back on, it really hides that. See? So it makes it really hard to get in here. I see some people maybe even just taking this thing off. Or possibly trimming it to make it to where it's not such a bear to get at. I mean, it's a shame. This is really cool looking. They did a really fantastic job of trying to make everything look like a legit bike. But they, they really killed it here with trying to get this... Uh... Man, wouldn't that have been something that actually fit... I wish. But yeah. Um, so there you have it. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed this kind of look here. You know, it's weird. You got these cooling fins right here. What look like cooling fins. Maybe that's just designed to look like radiators. But there's absolutely nothing back here that uh, it cools. I mean, even the ESC isn't bolted to it. So, it would be cool to open this up a little bit more and see back behind there, but I really don't want to get that in depth with this. Sorry, guys. But I thought it was pretty cool, just, you know, because this was quick and easy. Go ahead and open this up and show you kind of some of the inner working. So, I'm going to get a battery. We're going to take this out for a, a uh, rip and uh, next I'm going to show you a little size comparison between this and some of the regular more commonly known RC cars that's how big the pro moto is versus a corgi Come here. <laughs> this is bigger than the corgi all right uh, I do want to show you I haven't seen anybody mention this before 
there is a way the stand does have a front and a rear if you look how much deeper this side is than that so if we look here underneath see how this piece and I know it might be hard to see because it's all black components here but see this piece just snugs into there better than what this does see how this just kind of slides off so this piece here kind of locks into this little groove so this is something I haven't seen anybody point out on so there is a front and a rear to the stand not that it matters too much it seems to hold good either way but there we have it so now we're gonna go ahead and do a size comparison with some common RC cars pretty common Traxxas Rustler 4x4 VXL see it's almost as long Next up is the sledge. Look at that. It's almost as long. Look at that. Still a bit taller, but uh, pretty good. As if so, if you know how big the sledge is. Now for the mother of them all oh boy the x-max <laughs> dang x-max is almost as tall but there you have it i haven't seen anybody really do a size comparison of any of the more like i said traditional rc cars that maybe a lot of us have so Man, I mean, <laughs> the X Max almost in comparison with the same height. I'll move on to a couple road vehicles. So there's your infraction. We won't, uh, we won't keep it all tracks this year. So there you have it. Almost about as long. You know, the uh, infraction just a little bit longer, but definitely a lot smaller on that scale. Here we got the felony. <laughs> that thing is a freaking wild looking car too. Yeah, definitely not as long as the felony. Definitely a bit taller, but and we'll give you just a kind of compare how wide this thing is. So it's about as wide as the felony. If you look at comparison wise to everything so there you have it hope that uh kind of gives you a better idea about the size and the scale of what this bike is all right i got the battery in and it's working so let's test everything out so yeah like they said if you turn right it steers left so the steering's reversed but they said that's normal I do notice like right there it stops but look we still have more wheel so i guess it's just the servo saver will take up the slack and <laughs> do this and not launch the bike um okay so see how when we hit the brake it stops Watch the uh, front brake too. So you have both brakes. So now I haven't heard anybody do this, like a close up of this uh, flywheel spooling up. So let's let's get that.
let's go drive this thing. I want to show you something here. As you wiggle the bike, notice the front tire moving. That's that, uh, what I said earlier, that receiver doing like uh, traction control or, you know, trying to keep it steady. It's amazing what they get that thing to do. hope you enjoyed the driving videos I do the best I can I'm a one-man show I do everything from a GoPro on my head to the Insta360 on the driver to tripods I do what I can to get the best shots you know if I did this full-time and I made a living at this yeah I'd probably invest in something uh, some type of gimbal system that would slide and go by or I would have my wife or I probably get somebody to help me film but I'm doing the best I can you know I, I throw this out there for entertainment value and give like my honest opinion on what I believe in stuff and right now this is a really hot product so I know people are craving the information and that on it and all in all I love the thing I, this is a pretty cool RC I mean what's not to like about something that sounds like a turbine spooling up and spooling down I love it, it reminds me of Blackhawks but Anyhow, uh, so all in all, I like it. It's better off if you have like a lot of property to use. It's not really like a backyard um, thing. You can run it in the street. It does fine out there. I don't have a very wide street out here. To me, I found a secret is to go into the turn, slow down a little bit, hit the turn with not like a lot, but just a little momentum. That way when the, when the wheels, hit it'll carry and just kind of goose the the uh, throttle a little bit just to kind of get it going and then when it's straight up just hit the gas and go just as long as you keep it rolling even if it's on the wheels here it, it won't stop now in the dirt that's a whole different scenario you know sometimes these things dig in and they just sink in they catch something and they're gone uh, now I know it's supposed to be a, a dirt bike like Using it in my backyard in the first part was fine where it's pretty smooth. Uh, I went across the street to where my neighbor, he's got several acres out there. And even though this thing weighs in, I believe, I put on a scale, I believe it was like eight pounds. Uh, it's really bouncy and hoppy through the grass. It's kind of hard to keep it going. You know, you take a turn and it's just jumping. So I think this is just a little too slow. I think this just needs to be a little faster. Um, which I guess I can adjust. I could probably maybe take some of that uh, spring pressure out or even change the oil, make it a little bit uh, faster, you know, a little thinner, make it faster. But this is very slow to gum up. 
I think the front's fine. The front feels nice and plush, and it goes up and it returns pretty fast. So I think that that works. But now to me, I think it's just a little too slow on the back. Uh, only kind of like complaint I have is like where this battery clip is. It's a major pain, especially like when you're with me and you're about half blind on stuff that's up close. It's so hard to see and get this thing in. You really have to smash the battery case in there to get to where the pin is. I mean, you really got to push. Uh, plugging in the battery is not that bad. Unplugging it is a little harder. It's just, it's not the most convenient place. I get it. It's kind of what you have to deal with with the motorcycle. Uh, I don't know, maybe they could have put the plug up here on the top. So that way the, I guess not. I guess what they really wanted to do is make it to where the wires were as tucked in as possible. So they actually run through the tailpipe to keep them out of the way. So it's just slightly hard because this thing's close. So if this thing wasn't so close, you could just reach in there and grab that. So maybe a little bit more spacing right here on these. But that's really my only complaint is what kind of like the battery compartment. Uh, the, the clip's a little difficult and the battery part. Uh, other than that, I mean, I'm, I don't have a lot of time with it. I've run two battery packs through it. Uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Like I said, you kind of have to know what you're getting into when you buy it. This is kind of like the X-Max. Uh, you really need a lot of room to get out there and enjoy it. If you are going to run it in dirt, uh, it should be something kind of free of uh, twigs and, and jumps. I mean, it does okay. I mean, like I've seen videos of these things at the track, and they seem to do pretty good. It's a nice, smooth, hard pack. And, of course, you know, with knobbies and that, and it's a dirt bike, that's where you want to run it. It's on the dirt. So, and, you know, like I said, it's cool. You can put it in street mode, ride it on the street, do wheelies. Oh, that's something I want to talk about. I didn't really hear anybody uh, mention. Maybe you can hear it in the video, but when you do the wheelie, you just keep it nailed. You squeeze the trigger, it goes up. You can hear the, the motor in this thing spool up real quick and then stop. Like, like I mentioned before, the receiver in here senses the position of the bike. So what I'm guessing happens, the only thing I can figure. So once it's up on the back wheel and it's at that right angle, it cuts the power to the motor all on its own. So I know maybe some people are wondering about how you do the wheelie control. You just hold it to the floor, man, and go. Also, like you said, I did the jumps. This kind of not what we're used to with the RC cars. Any of these where you jump, you want to get off the gas because you don't want to land with power on. This, they actually tell you to land with power on. They said if you take the power out, this thing will just tend to nose down and this being the weakest link uh, this front end you don't want it really landing on that front end so they say keep the power on that's why they put a slipper clutch in there so when it lands it'll slip and it won't uh, tear stuff up I mean, you're only on a 2s anyhow so I don't think you're putting gobs of power through plus you know you get a little chain so I mean if you really damage something I think you might break that chain but Anyhow, from Lozy Direct, they say to keep the power on during a jump. They said, you know, if it does start to go high, you know, let go so it will nose down. But this thing will just intuitively just try to nose down. So they're like, when you jump, and that worked for me. Every time I jumped, I hit the jump. I kept the gas on. It landed perfect. Like, just the back wheel just touched, and it took off. So it's pretty cool. I mean, the... Uh, Attention to detail, the realism on this thing is just phenomenal. They did such a great job to make the rider look real. I mean, even sitting this close, you look at it and you think this is like a real person. It just has like a natural stance to it. And, and the bike, I mean, it just looks amazing. It looks like a real bike. Like, I'm pretty sure if you did it right with the camera angles, you could film this thing or even take pictures and somebody would think, oh man, that's you on the bike. Looks that good. It does. I mean, I think... You know, they even made sure to put little brake and clutch levers on here. They even put like a little master cylinder for that. I mean, it look, really does look authentic. They did an awesome job on this thing. It is fun, and it's not that bad priced. Uh, I will say, what was the price? I think they're like 649 right now. 
on the box it actually said like 729 so I think the uh, 649 is the intro price I don't think Losey expected the uh, Uh, you know the amount of people that would want this so I think they initially offered at a lower price to get get it out the door and get into people's hands and people would see it and want to buy more so be aware if you want one you might want to jump on it now because at least the, the sticker I had from Hobby Town it did say uh, it said whatever it was like 729 but they had it to 649 so just something to keep in mind I think the price is gonna go up on this once the first batch is out and all the pre-orders are done so all right hope you enjoyed this look at another look i'm pretty sure like i said i'm pretty sure you've watched other videos in this so i hope you enjoyed another look at the lozy remote control motorcycle hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching hope you subscribe and join us for some more rc and travel adventures thanks for watching Thank you.